So in this video, we will be discussing about the design constants that we need while designing the tanks. So what are those design constants? K, that is nothing but the neutral axis depth factor. J, that is nothing but the liver arm factor and R is nothing but the moment of resistance factor. These three factors we need to understand while doing the design of tanks because that is based on working stress design, right? So in this video, we will be seeing what, what are these K, J and R. For that, we need to draw a cross section of a beam whose breadth is B and this is a singly reinforced beam so it's AST and you know what is AST and all and this is the effective depth that is nothing but the distance from the top to the central portion and this is the neutral axis so I am hoping that you know uh, about neutral axis it is nothing but the layer in which there is no uh, effective stress or strain right so that is a layer in between where there is no elongation or contraction happening that's you have already studied in your limit state design so this is the strain block strain block and this is represented by ec the strain in concrete and the stress strain in steel is represented by es and this is the stress block stress block here, uh, uh, while considering the working stress design, we are having a triangular stress block here because we assume that the material uh, is still within the elastic limit. Okay, it's not going, it's not an elastoplastic design, it's a purely elastic design, right? So, here we are having a triangular stress pattern. and uh, the stress in concrete is represented by small c and the total compressive force is represented by capital c here the stress in steel is represented by t and the equivalent stress in concrete this is very important because i need this equivalent stress in concrete uh, that will be nothing but T by M. This we already know uh, from the previous video, we have seen that what is modular ratio. What is modular ratio? It is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of steel and modulus of elasticity of concrete in case of the reinforced concrete session. And there we have seen that the stress in steel will be M times the stress in concrete. So stress in concrete will be T by M. Okay. Uh, and the stress, the total stress is represented by tensile stress is represented by capital T. Okay. So, from the toe portion to the neutral axis Na, this distance is called the neutral axis depth. Okay. And it is represented by N and N is nothing but K into D. And the remaining portion from uh, from the figure itself, we know that this will be n minus k, sorry, d minus k d, where d is the effective depth. This this much we know. And this distance will be because this is a triangle. The total compressive force will fall uh, in the center of the triangle, and this distance will be nothing but n by three, because one third from the base. Those things you know. Okay. So. First of all, we are going to find out what is K. How can we find out K, the neutral axis depth factor? And the neutral axis depth factor can be found out by simply considering this, uh, uh, these two triangles. Okay, considering these two triangles. So, considering this, those two triangles will be getting C divided by KD that is equal to this c dash what is c dash that is nothing but t by m the whole divided by this much distance that will be d minus kd okay so i can cancel out one d here so what i am getting is c by k is nothing but t divided by m into one minus k 
so if i am writing m c minus m c k is equal to k t and what i am getting is k my neutral axis depth factor that will be nothing but m c divided by m c uh, plus t okay so m is the molar ratio c is the stress in concrete uh, t is the stress in steel okay so if i am writing in terms of the permissible stress values then it is it can be again written as m into sigma c b c divided by m sigma c b c plus sigma s t okay so what is the sigma c b c and sigma s t so sigma c b c is the permissible st compressive stress in concrete due to bending uh, uh, compressive stress in concrete due to bending and uh, this is the permissible uh, stress in steel okay the permissible stress in steel these values we can get from, from the code itself sigma cbc and sigma st values can be found out from uh, the code table 21 will give you the value of sigma cbc okay now, of is456 will give you the value of sigma cbc and similarly sigma st also you can get it from is3370 when we are dealing with the tank we will see all those things while uh, coming across the design part okay so in this uh, here i can see that there is also one uh, formula given in is456 is 456 page number 80 page number 80 close b 2.1.2 okay and there it is given m is equal to uh, 280 by 3 sigma cbc so if i'm from here i can get m sigma cbc is nothing but 93.33 okay so if i am substituting the value then i will get k is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.0107 sigma st so this is very important why it is important because the k the neutral axis depth factor we can see that this is only dependent on sigma st value that means the permissible stress in steel the neutral axis depth is only depending on the uh, the permissible stress in steel and it is not at all depending on the permissible compressive stress in concrete the, or the grade of concrete it is not depending on the grade of concrete okay so those things that we will get from k so k this is important for us k is equal to m sigma cbc divided by sig, sig, m sigma cbc plus sigma st the next thing that we have to learn is what is j what is j what is j it is the liveram factor what is the liveram it is the distance between the total tensile force and total compressive force and in the, from the figure itself we know that the distance between the from the figure you can understand that uh, if this much is n by 3 and if from the tau fiber to the tensile portion it is t then the distance between c and t will nothing but d minus n by 3 okay from the figure you can see that it will be d minus n by 3 so our j we have represented our liver arm by a okay so that a will be d minus n by 3 what is a it is nothing but j into d is equal to d minus what is n n is nothing but k into d by 3 so one d get cancelled and what we are getting is j is equal to 1 minus k by 3 so we got the next equation also the next design constant j at j is equal to 1 minus k by 3 so if i am uh, finding out the value of k then i can find easily find out the value of j here j is the liberal factor uh the next thing that i have to find out is r i have to find out is r okay what is r it is a factor that we are using in our moment of resistance in our moment of resistance okay the r value uh this this we can find out by using this equation 
MR. What is moment of resistance? The from the figure, it is very clear that the moment of resistance. This we have studied in our limit state design also. Uh, the MR moment of resistance can be uh, uh, taken as either in terms of C or in terms of T. If I am taking it in terms of C, it is nothing but C into the liver arm, and if I am taking in terms of T, total tensile force, then T into liver arm. Okay, so that is the moment of resistance. So MR it can be either capital C, the total compressive force into the liver arm, that is nothing but C into JD, or it can be equal to, uh, or it can be equal to total tensile force into A that is equal to T into JD. Okay, if I am taking, so I have to know what is C and what is T. The total compressive force from the figure, it is very clear that the total compressive force will be the area under this curve, right? Area under this triangle portion. So this triangle portion, I can write half into the top is C, the, the, this portion will be C, what is that? The compressive stress in concrete and C into up to the neutral axis depth into, uh, this is for a section and we have the breadth as P, so we have to multiply this with P, this we have done in the limit state design also, so I am going to, uh, so it will be half C K B D. okay. And in case of uh, T, this we know that from the figure, it will be uh, the total tensile force will be the stress into the area, right? It will be sigma ST into AST into J. Okay. So, if I am substituting these values, then my MR becomes, my MR becomes, uh, MR is equal to half CKBD into JD. That is nothing but uh, half c k j b d squared i can write this as r b d squared so my r is nothing but half c k j in terms of permissible stress values i can write it as half sigma c d c k into j this is very important so my r is nothing but half sigma CBC K into J. You can see that R is dependent on sigma CBC and K because J is again dependent on K, right? And K, we have seen that this is dependent on sigma ST. So basically, the value R is based on sigma CBC and sigma ST. That means the permissible value of compressive stress in concrete or the grade of concrete and grade of steel and is not dependent on the dimension of the beam section. Okay, so MR is equal to RBD squared. This we are getting from based on our compressive stress uh, or the compressive force. Then again, by using this formula, our MR becomes MR is equal to sigma ST AST into JD, right? So from that, we can see that AST is nothing but MR divided by sigma ST J into D. So for finding out the uh, reinforcement uh, area of reinforcement, we can use this formula MR divided by sigma STJD and finding out the depth of the section, we can use this formula MR is equal to RPD squared. Okay. So, this is what uh, we were discussing about uh, in this particular video. We find out uh, the value of K, J, and R. K is nothing but M sigma CBC by M sigma CBC plus sigma ST and J is nothing but 1 minus K by 3 and R is nothing but half sigma CBC K J. Thank you.